New Hampshire is one of two states that still has not been called by NBC News in the presidential race. It's still too close to call. But voters split on their choices in New Hampshire for Senate and governor, choosing Democrat Maggie Hassan over Republican Kelly Ayotte for the Senate and Chris Sununu for governor, following in the footsteps of his famous father, John Sununu, who joins me now. Governor, congratulations on the victory for the family, uh, continuing Thank a great tradition saying. in New Hampshire. Thank you so Thank much you for, for being with us today. Thank you for saying famous instead of infamous. Well, I was thinking about infamous, but I decided <laughs> it's Friday, you know. <laughs> you and I have known each other a long time, so we can, we can kid yes. each other, I think, safely. Uh, you held the job of Chief of Staff for President Bush 41, so I wanted to ask you about that and about tra transitions, because President Bush 41 was so gracious. President George W. Bush was uh, famously gracious, uh, as President Obama has acknowledged publicly and privately. Uh, what do you see now in this transition? What does this administration need to do? They seem to be going uh, all out to try to make it easier for the true outsider to come in and have a successful first hundred days at least. Well, I think you're, you're going to see a transition not only in the traditional sense, but I think you're going to see a transition in the president-elect himself. I think we have a uh, understanding of what Specific things have to be done in the next 70 days, appointments and a preparing an agenda for Congress and so on. But uh, I think you're also going to see a transition in style. At least I think you will. Now, there are reports of Steve Bannon uh, as a possible chief of staff. You know that job. Uh, let's you know, talk about whether someone who is truly an outsider and uh, appeals to that part of Donald Trump's agenda can do the job of chief of staff between both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue? Look, I think you need somebody who has been a little bit involved in the political process because there is an art form to dealing with uh, the care and feeding of Congress, etc. So you want somebody who's got at least a bit of a relationship with the folks down there. I've always leaned towards somebody who's been elected to something, uh, uh, a former governor. Somebody with warmth and charm, like like uh, the chief of staff for George Herbert Walker Bush, but but you do need somebody that understands the process of keeping things moving in the White House, keeping things going. Us folks use the phrase "keep the trains running," but having a good political sense as well. And that's up to Donald Trump to, to weigh the pros and cons of the people they put on his uh, list to be evaluated as who will take that job. And I should point out that there were problems in the Carter White House when you had, you know, Georgians who had never been in Washington coming in, and uh, there was some really terrible relationship between Tip O'Neill, for instance, and the late Ham Jordan. This was Andy Card, who followed you as chief of staff, uh, talking about what attributes they should uh, they should be looking for. Chief of Staff very early. It should be someone who can speak candidly to the president, you know, speak truth to power. It should be someone who is there not to please the president, even though they serve at the pleasure of the president. They've got to tell the president what he needs to know, not necessarily what he wants to know. That's another, another important piece Andy's here. Someone right. who is willing to walk into that Oval Office and say, sir, or it would have been madam, <laughs> this doesn't work. Andy's right. It was my honor to work for a president uh, that let me uh, be as direct as I needed to be to give him the, both the good news and the bad news and, and to give him the good recommendations that I knew he wanted to hear, but give him the hard recommendations that I knew he didn't want to hear. And so uh, if you, I know you probably can't speak for your son, but what are the big challenges for Chris Sununu, the new governor of New Hampshire, governor-elect? Well, we have a terrible opioid problem up here, and that right. was one of the principal platforms Chris had in his campaign. And I think he's got to really refocus government on some of the things that are attractive to bringing jobs into the state. The business community has uh, seen a continual slicing of taxes and regulation to the point where we're now losing jobs to our neighbors instead of attracting jobs. So those are the two principal issues he's going to focus on. Okay, Governor Sununu, with all your warmth and charm, don't be a stranger. Talk to you soon, <laughs> I hope. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.